All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to a look at the 2024 Electoral College map, as well as kind of the, I'll call it a prediction um, for tonight. And this is not, by the way, the prediction. Um, this is actually currently just the state of my model. Ignore that uh, DC is completely screwy. It's mostly because of how partisan it is, as well as the fundamentals that I've built in, as well as national polling incumbency, and uh, Biden's average approval rating, which right now is actually sitting at, uh, I think it's a net of just over plus six and a half percent, which is not terrible, I mean, given the past couple of years. But it's just kind of an indication that the honeymoon period is kind of going over. And I'm using only likely voter polls as well as registered voter polls and Gallup only. Um, there's always a link to this model in the description. And if you want to download a copy, you obviously can. And play around with some stuff and, you know, try and figure out how the model works yourself. I've kind of, I know how it works. I know what it's designed to do. And yeah, so this is what it looks like in map representation form. Right now, I'm not splitting up Maine's or, uh, Maine's or Nebraska's congressional districts because we don't know how those are going to be drawn and what the partisanship of those districts will look like. Um, and this is much different than the way it started off with, uh, I believe it was South Dakota, Tennessee, I'm just highlighting the states. Actually, I think Kentucky. Yeah, I know Utah definitely was. But yeah, those state, there were even weeks where Kentucky was um, and Arkansas were blue in the model. Oops. But as we can see, Uh, some things have changed, obviously. Like I said, uh, the honeymoon period is kind of ending for Biden. And I have also not started tracking the economic factor. But I don't think it'll start off real well because unemployment continues to remain pretty high at about 6 to 8% and inflation is going insane. Um, the stock market seems to be the only economic indicator that is actually performing well right now. Um, so yeah, once I started including the economy, things could get really bad. Uh, things could start changing a little bit. And before you ask, you know, well, you always had it positive for Trump despite the pandemic. Uh, yeah, that was maybe a slight error on my part, um, but things were seeming to be, for me at least, not incredibly insane off the charts. But as I'm doing more research and looking into things right now, the more I'm starting to realize the economy is not doing nearly as well as I thought it was. <laughs> so, there's that. Anyway, so let's talk about what the actual election will look like. And again, I'm not going to split up Maine or Nebraska simply because, guess what? I do not believe that it, it, well, I don't know what the districts will look like, and we don't know what the partisan evaluation will be of those districts. I'm not going to assume any candidate for the GOP nomination. Um, about the only thing I'm going to assume is that it won't be Trump. Sorry, Trump fans, it won't be. Um, I'm going to get the safe states out of the way first. I'm actually going to put Colorado there. I'm going to put Virginia there. So I think Virginia's kind of gone. Delaware is only there because of home state effect. Jersey. And... Hmm... We'll talk about these states, the mid, these mid-Atlantic states, uh, slash eastern seaboard states, as well as these southern New England states. 
Vermont, Massachusetts, New York. I'm talk about Illinois. On GOP side, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, Montana is going to be safe. The Dakotas will be safe. Nebraska will be safe. We'll talk about Kansas, Oklahoma. That's safe. Missouri, that's safe. Arkansas, safe. Louisiana, Mississippi. Alabama, and we'll talk about South Carolina. Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Indiana. And we'll talk about Iowa, Ohio as well. Now, some people are going to say this is a very expansive battleground map, but I'm not really saying that it's the battleground map. I just said we're going to talk about the states. And I'm going to start with the states that there's an outside shot. They could be competitive if things go really well for the GOP or the Democrats in that state, in which case, hey, they, they might be competitive. Probably not going to flip unless it's a landslide year, but hey, there's going to be some interesting dynamic going forward, and we should at least consider that there are trends that might sh change things significantly. And by the way, before I forget, if you like the content, a like, a comment, and a subscription is greatly appreciated. It helps the channel grow, and it helps the algorithm not hate me. And I want to see if we can reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I think that would be very fun. So that's Illinois, New Jersey, Connecticut. I'll put Rhode Island to safe for now. But those are states that given perfect circumstances, could become competitive. Uh, New Mexico is well on the Democratic side. And Alaska on the Republican side. Uh, South Carolina, too. Any others? Uh, Ohio, Iowa, Kansas as well, I guess. And now we're going to go ahead and talk about states that I would classify as lean, which is in a pretty good year for the other party. They can absolutely win it, and it wouldn't take that much. These are your true, you know, these are your absolute battlegrounds where it is imperative for the other party you know, it's imperative to campaign in to make sure you don't lose them because if your opponent campaigns here and you don't, you could definitely lose. And those I'm going to include as Michigan, Minnesota, Maine, um, and I'm also going to put New Hampshire in there as well. And on the GOP side, I'm putting Florida there. Putting Texas there, though Texas is borderline likely in my opinion, but I'm pretty confident about Texas. Um, and I'm actually putting Nevada there just because of how inelastic Nevada is. And as you can see, the Democrats are racking up an advantage. Now we're going to talk about tilts. And tilts are where these are super competitive states. They really could go up either way, but I don't like having toss-ups, so I'm going to pick the side that I would feel most likely is going to carry that state at this point in time. And I'm putting Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina in that category for the Republicans, and... At the very moment, because I favor incumbents, I'm putting Wisconsin and Pennsylvania into that category on the Democratic side, which would be a very competitive election. That said, there is a very good argument to be made for Wisconsin being tilt Republican. 
And that's because I think the driftless area is not as favorable to the Democrats as uh, some Democrats would believe. And it's kind of going to become less of a driftless area and more of a perpetually leans Republican era area. Um, that said, suburban shift might be enough. But as we've seen in some special elections, the suburban shift might be kind of rebounding back towards the Republicans a touch. We'll see exactly how whether or not that happens. Um, with the June 1st special election in New Mexico's 1st Congressional District, as well as a few others from, I think, some Washington State House districts and other special elections this cycle, which are upcoming. So... We'll see how that works. And let's not forget that redistricting is going to be a thing as um, that's going to play a major role in how the nation is looking going forward into 2024. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I want to thank everybody for watching. I hope you all have a very nice evening. Again, a like, a comment, a subscription is greatly appreciated. And uh, have a very, very lovely evening. Good night.